Now my plan today is to make those bushings I was talking about in video number one. And I'm going to use this broom handle here. It's pretty hard and it's already round. And I've got to measure precisely now what size the small bushing has to be and the large bushing. And this, believe it or not, is a scraper. It's out of my uh, spindle duplicator. And the end is extremely sharp. I've obviously resharpened it after I used it the last time. So, I'm going to use that to turn down this to the right size to accommodate these two pieces. Now the brass tubes for this kit will only fit this mandrel. Okay, now I believe it's a quarter inch. Well, maybe a smidge less, but I'm going to drill this out to a quarter inch. Now I should be able to take the average of all of these little crisscross markings and find the center point. Now the broom handle is not perfectly round. That's why I have to take the average. I think that's pretty close. Now after all the effort I went to to make sure that I was going to get the hole in the right place, I screwed it up somehow. Now I know I could have cut off another piece of broom handle and done it the right way and you would have never known the difference. But as I've said before, I like to keep these videos honest. And as you can see here, there's plenty of wood on the lean side of that hole. I don't need to worry about not having enough wood to turn down there. Well, hopefully you will recall that I've said I make these videos as I go along. And there's been another change in plans here. This cutter that I was planning on using, I'd have to shim it up in the machine that I'm planning on using with it. Whereas this cutter is already pretty sharp and I can angle it so I can use this point and it will already be the right height. As you can see, this one here is slightly higher than this one. You'll see in a minute what I'm talking about. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to video this and watch carefully what I'm doing at the same time. So I'm probably going to do this uh, turning here without the camera on. That way I can devote my entire attention to what I'm doing because I will be using the automatic feed and I wouldn't want to accidentally run my cutter into the chuck. I mean that would be disastrous. Now this is the first time that I've used this machine for wood and I can't see why it shouldn't work. 
The only problem I can see having here is if I don't make sure I get rid of all the sawdust. This machine is rather greasy and the sawdust is going to stick to it. Be hard to clean up. Well, what we've got here is we've got this piece slightly bigger than the diameter of this and this piece here is slightly bigger than the diameter here. And now all I have to do is just cut these in half and also right there, make four pieces out of it and we'll see if it'll work. Well, clearly I can't use this very end. But it looks pretty good after you get about a quarter of an inch up. I'm not going to bother sanding it. It doesn't need to be smooth. Well, it's a good thing they don't have to be pretty. All they have to do is let me know when I've turned the end of my blank down to the right diameter. And that they're going to do. And if I accidentally touch one with my chisel, I don't need to worry about hurting the chisel.